Today, Bitcoin ticks lower a day after the Fed repeated its promise to keep raising rates. Goldman Sachs wants to demystify crypto with a new classification system. And Robinhood's stock rallies after a better than expected third quarter. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Digital currencies are mixed this morning, a day after the Fed raised interest rates and Chair Jay Powell signaled more hikes are ahead. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin managed to stay above $20,000. Ether traded at around $1,500 and Polygon's Matic token jumped to 95 cents. Okay, let's get you caught up on the top stories. First, Goldman Sachs wants to standardize crypto for the financial services industry. The investment bank is getting ready to unveil a new classification system for digital assets as part of a new partnership with MSCI and CoinMetrics. Now, the system will divvy up digital assets into classes, sectors, and subsectors. Anne-Marie Darling, who's the head of client strategy for Goldman's Marquee platform, said, quote, we're trying to create a framework for the digital asset ecosystem that our clients can understand because they increasingly need to think about performance tracking and risk management in digital assets. If you want to read that full report, you can head over to CNBC.com. Now, at the same time, another Wall Street giant is bringing crypto to the masses. Fidelity just opened its waitlist for commission-free crypto trading. The service called Fidelity Crypto is tailored to retail customers and lets them trade both Bitcoin and Ether. The service can also be used for custody. Users will be required to keep at least a $1 minimum balance. And while there are no commissions, Fidelity will impose a 1% spread on every trade. The service is, of course, meant to take on the likes of Robinhood. And speaking of Robinhood, that company's stock is rallying this morning thanks to better than expected earnings. The retail trading giant reported a smaller than expected loss in the third quarter at $175 million. Now, compare that to a year ago when the company lost more than $1.3 billion in a single quarter. It's not all good news, though. Robinhood's number of active users is still declining as the crypto bear market drags on. Now, Robinhood isn't the only crypto company reporting earnings this week. Coinbase's earnings come out this afternoon, and we will have much more on that tomorrow. Okay, let's talk about our main story. With the Fed confirming more rate hikes ahead and global economic pressures still weighing on the industry, what's next for crypto prices and businesses? I spoke to Bud White of Tassin to find out. So we got yet another rate hike from the Fed yesterday. Of course, this one was expected, but a lot of investors were planning for some sort of pivot on monetary policy, which we didn't really get. Now, prices are falling today because of it. So my question to you is, how are investors in crypto resetting their expectations today? I think that the, the hike in rates um, really affects the macros. Um, it brings a lot of people um, from kind of this bubble of tech equities and crypto and pushes them more towards fixed income because they can get better yields. Um, but I do think that we will see a, a decoupling between tech equities and crypto um, in the months to come. I think that we won't see too, as much of an impact in, in crypto as we do in tech. And that's mostly because um, we're starting to see a lot more uh, financial products being built on the blockchain. This means that once we have enough products in crypto that can um, supplement products in traditional financial markets, whether that's yield generation or um, let's say equity investment, that type of thing, we'll see a lot more pickup of crypto rather than having to kind of look at the rate specifically moving capital back and forth between uh, equities and fixed income. So even if the Fed does change course in the future, there's no sign that they would lower interest rates in the near term. So how much pressure will persistently high rates put on crypto prices? I think that we, we've already seen very high yield rates within crypto, um, and that was predicated on a very strong crypto market. I do believe that there are uh, uh, utilities within the market that we can still see high interest rates within crypto. So I, I think a persistently high Fed rate won't have as large of an effect within crypto as it does on traditional uh, tech equities. And what about from the business perspective? We have all these economic pressures hitting crypto right now. How do businesses navigate this environment? And will we see any kind of slowdown in projects if the macro environment remains unfavorable? I think what we've seen is since the slowdown at the beginning of the year, um, there's still a lot of venture capital out there undeployed. Um, so projects like mine, um, we are 
still able to raise capital from funds that have money sitting idle. And a down market is the best time to build technology. We don't have um, uh, as many customers pushing for certain features or our product release dates. We can kind of sit back um, in this downturn, build to the way that we actually want to have the product launch and be able to, to, to get it out there. I think we're seeing a lot of growth. Uh, there are a lot of new companies that have raised within the last couple of months within crypto to start solving very applicable problems within the ecosystem. So DeFi has been a particularly strong performer throughout the bear market. Do you expect that to continue or what sorts of projects or platforms stand to weather the storm most easily? I think that what we've seen in this last uh, cycle are projects that have been greed oriented. Uh, look at Celsius, for example. Celsius was prom promising 16 or 17 percent yield uh, APY, which in a traditional market, you would ask how, and we, we now know how they were running a very aggressive model. There might have been some fraud, allegedly, um, but I think those are the projects that are going to disappear in this next crypto cycle. We're starting to see a lot more, like I said, real applications. Um, if you're holding crypto and you want to apply for a mortgage, we're seeing companies allowing this. This is something that we didn't have last cycle. And what about bright spots on the horizon? Is there anything that investors should be watching that could boost crypto through some of the headwinds that it's facing right now? So I think the two areas to watch for are regulation and what's going to uh, change you know, from the SEC, from, from all the regulatory bodies in terms of who can hold crypto. As soon as we uh, have a, a set of regulations that institutions can hold crypto, we're going to see much more adoption. The other area for investors to really dive into is who to trust and trustlessness. If we look, for example, with um, Meta and Facebook and the metaverse, uh, we're not seeing a lot of adoption there. And I think it's because users don't trust these mega corporations with their identity. A lot of uh, smaller companies are building in the metaverse, or for example, Tassin's building an exchange that you don't have to trust and deposit your assets into. And we're using the fundamental building blocks of blockchain to remove the need to trust people from the ecosystem. I would put a lot of research uh, um, into the companies that are doing this and, and add those to your portfolio. So yes, the Fed is moving crypto prices, but we've also seen a lot of publicly traded companies that are in the crypto space in some capacity, whether it's Coinbase today, Robinhood yesterday, Meta also reported, obviously have made a lot of moves into the metaverse. So set the scene there for me. Sure. I mean, we, we've seen the downturn of crypto over the last couple of months uh, because reporting is, is instantaneous. With a lot of these companies, they don't have the same reporting structure as you need to as a public company. So what we're seeing is the aftershock of what may have happened two, three months ago within Meta, for example, is just hitting the street this week. Um, overall, I think Meta uh, missed the mark um, for a couple of reasons. One, they're trying to build a product um, in the metaverse for a group of people, crypto people, who inherently don't trust their identity with large corporations. So this is kind of like when JP Morgan released their own cryptocurrency. Um, banks are regulated. Uh, you should trust banks with, with your money. But coming into this new space, they weren't able to build something as creatively or dynamically as a small, smaller company coming into the space could. So what we're seeing is a lack of adoption within the metaverse partly because people aren't trusting uh, their identity, their, their data, their uh, assets with a company like, like Meta or Facebook. One thing that we're seeing are the five largest tech companies have had uh, price earnings ratios much higher than any other SaaS company in the space. Um, with an increase of rates, of course, a much more capital is going to go towards fixed incomes and those multiples are going to come down. I would even question why they're so high. Um, the Googles, the Facebooks, uh, the, the Apples, they're almost at saturation with the consumers who are um, adopting their products. I just don't see how tech equities and crypto can remain coupled, e even with the, the, the interest rate uh, movement, because crypto is at the very beginning of its adoption curve, and these large tech companies are at the end. So there, there will be a separation, and we'll start to see the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other uh, blue chip cryptos start to creep up because they are starting to see more adoption. Um, I think the, the quote I heard is uh, analysts are saying it's being adopted twice as quick as the internet was in the 90s. So we really are just at the beginning right now of uh, the potential earnings, 
within the crypto ecosystem. And I can tell you from being on the inside that we have not stopped building. Um, the prices have gone down. That hasn't deterred us from building what we see as the next generation of useful products in the crypto space. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we will be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.